And I think that it'll be helpful, like I said, to wrap up with just strategies that we use ourselves or we use with clients. And I know for myself, honestly, quotes really help me. I know that it might sound cheesy, but once a quote hits, I feel like it really hits for me. And it's so helpful to repeat that quote, have it written down, whether it's on my computer so I see it every day or I have a whiteboard in front of my computer. So I'll write down quotes on that that are really going to help me move the needle forward. And so I have a bunch of different quotes that fit different areas of my life, but it's one that within this, it's choose your heart. And so exactly what Austin was saying of those people that always take the easiest route, you can choose the hard of going against the easiest route, um, or you can choose the hard of you always go the easiest route and then you end up with a life that you don't like, or you end up in a health situation that you don't like because you're always choosing the easiest thing for food, or you're always choosing anything that doesn't require discipline from you or anything that doesn't require any type of like struggle from you. And if you don't struggle any of your life, when are you going to, you need to stress your body for training wise, you need to stress your body to see it change. It's the same thing with your mind. And it's the same thing with life. You need to stress it to see that change. And so being able to choose your heart is something really powerful to me. Uh, Hey, I can choose the heart of doing this thing that I don't want to do right this second, or I can do the opposite and choose the easy thing, but down the road, that's going to be a different hard for me. Um, And then something else is kind of, again, asking yourself some questions of like that first question of, are you willing to exchange short-term comfort for long-term function? Because when you phrase it like that, it seems like a no-duh kind of moment. Of course I want long-term function. Of course I want long-term happiness. But time and time again, you're choosing that short-term comfort. So that's a very important question to truly ask and answer honestly for yourself, as well as asking, do you even have faith in your abilities that you can make this happen? Why do you keep taking the instant gratification? Because you don't have faith that that your heart hard work is going to do anything. Um, It's also something that I heard the quote once. It was actually in Evansville at one of the gyms that we used to go to. It said, um, using the example of like, oh, it's going to take too long. The time is going to pass anyways. So why not be where I want to be instead of keep thinking, oh, it's going to take me a few years. The time's going to pass. So why don't I just go ahead and do it? So when the time does pass, I can feel better about what's been accomplished um, and being able to get there. And then the two last things I'll personally mention is I know I work best off of challenges. And so I'll challenge myself of, okay, you have to do this every day for seven days and like either mark it off a calendar or or be able to put it on your to-do list and check it off. Or for example, like yoga was a huge thing I wanted to implement into my daily routine. And I used accountability within Alex of in our weekly check-ins. When I check in, I have to say if I've done my yoga and I really didn't want to have to erase in my check-in that I didn't do it. And so that was a challenge that I made for myself and that was really helpful for me. Um, And then another thing that you can do is to get your reps in is to promise something small to yourself and then deliver. Just like we talked about with keeping promises, make a smaller, realistic promise to yourself, keep it, then savor that feeling. And next time you're about to do something, make another promise to yourself and keep it. And that will start the trajectory and get things rolling to get you to that point where you're able to understand why gratification doesn't always need to be delayed, but why it's helpful to delay it in multiple instances. Yeah. um, The one tactic that I'll speak very heavily on that I use within myself and clients, I am Mr. Distraction, uh, point blank. Mm -hmm. There's just very, very easily distracted at all times. And so things that I personally have to do, I have to limit myself very abundantly um, when I'm wanting to get into a state of a very uh, focus uh, or very good focus or, you know, pushing towards a delayed gratification of a goal of some sort. So in my work environment, this is the easy one for me to to speak to is that on my computer, I have a a one tab rule on each screen. So I have two screens pulled up. There's only one tab on each. If I have multiple tabs, 
I know that I'll get a little curious and want to pop over to see what's going on on this one as if there's going to be any change than when I just checked it five minutes ago. So we're going to exit out of the other tabs, just two tabs. And so then from there, I also need a little bit of uh, sound because the uh, silence is going to allow for my mind to wander or my eyes to wander off of what I need to be focusing on. So some lo-fi beats is a very important piece for me. Um, and so then from there, I have a timer. And so I have a, a time allotment in which I'm going to be focusing on this singular task and I'm not going to veer from this. I'm not going to check my phone. I'm not going to check Instagram, any of those different things. And so that is the, I know that sounds kind of like rigid, which it very much so is, but I have to have that, especially with the the busyness of my schedule and those different factors uh, to allow for myself to be very focused. So that is one tool that I utilize. And I know that for many individuals, you may be uh, Mr. or Mrs. Distracted as well. And so that may be a useful tool for you at work when you're on your computer and you have a very like specific task to get done, you have this time frame. Um, giving yourself a start and end date has been very helpful for me. Um, so that would be the main tactic that I speak to. And I do the same thing within my training as well. I set a timer for how long I believe the training to be. I turn off my notifications, all those different factors, have music playing, and I go after it. And so it really applies to everything. Yeah, I think peace of mind for me is a, is a big one, right? And <clears throat> when I speak of peace of mind and knowing that, you know, and this, this falls into timers, right? This falls into, uh, keeping yourself within a, a, within a constraint, right? Whether that's, you know, you could constraints, you know, food, food environments, hiding foods that you constantly can just reach and grab or see, putting them in a drawer, putting them in, in a non -tran non-transparent container and stowing them away to making it, there's more friction to get to that distraction or, whatever that thing is for you. A harder barrier of entry. A harder barrier of entry, right? Create friction. And I think creating friction within, whether that's your goals within um, dieting, within your fitness and health, or you know, just feeling better day in and day out from a sense of like doing the things you want to do and, and keeping the promises you, you make to yourself, right? And I think we use these all the time. Like, so for me, when I talked about peace of mind, it's you know, I set an alarm to get up in the morning. When I go to sleep, I usually set two alarms. So I have peace of mind of like, well, one of these is going to go off. <laughs> and I can fall asleep with that. We've all tried to fall asleep with no alarm set, knowing that we have to get up at a certain time. How easy was it for you to go to sleep? Probably not the easiest <laughs> for you to fall into a deep, relaxing sleep, right? Because you're like, well, am I going to wake up? Or you wake up every 30 minutes. You're like, oh, is it is it 5 30 yet? <laughs> like, you know, and it's like, no, it's 12 30. Relax. You just fell asleep at 12. Like, go to sleep. Um, and so peace of mind's a big thing, right? And so when Alex talks about timers, like with work and stuff, like, you know, I don't use as strict of a constraint as Alex does within timers, but I do set, you know, I just go to timer countdown on Google, set a time that I think this task is going to take me. And that way I have peace of mind or when I have an appointment coming up and it's like, okay, I'm going to set a timer to where this timer goes off five minutes before this appointment where I need to change task and do the thing I need to do next. I have the peace of mind to sink myself fully into that task, knowing that this external tool is going to pull me out of it at the right time, right? Which allows me to fully sink into to what I'm doing. Right. And I think creating boundaries and the whole, I think all of us kind of talking about these things is like creating boundaries or constraints to allow ourselves to be who we want to be in that moment without the need to feel distracted or pulled away from it due to time or, or to something else that, that may be pulling on our mind. Right. Because if we can constraint, if we can add constraint to those things and compartmentalize those things, the more we're going to help ourselves do it. And again, that goes for training that being on a training program right? The Physique Development Training Club. There you go. <laughs> uh, but being on a training program allows you that, that constraint of knowing when you step into the gym, you have, as long as you're doing those reps and those sets and you're following the exercise selection that, that you, is on your program, you're going to be working towards your goal. And that is a good feeling. Every time you go into the gym and you have a program to follow that is set up to get you to where you want to go, that's a good feeling. Right. And there's a peace of mind to that. Well, as long as I show up and do the work, I'm going to be working towards where I want to be in the future. 
right? And the same thing goes with nutrition, having a plan with nutrition, the same thing goes with work, the same thing goes with relationships, the same thing goes with a lot of things, right? And the last thing I'll mention here is I, I talk about the feeling as well. Identify with the feeling. And there's nothing I crave more than that feeling that I get when I kept my promise. Yeah. Or when I did the thing I said I was going to do. And I delivered it on time or before the due date, right? Or maybe a couple hours after. <laughs> but I but I kept it, right? Yeah. That's the big thing is I kept the promise and I didn't have excuses for why I didn't get it done. Sometimes things come up. But if you want to have that feeling, and I promise you it's worth the pursuit of it. The first day that you were on point with your training, your nutrition, and all the things you wanted to get done that day or that were obviously within re a realistic scope of what you could get done that day, there's that feeling you get at the end of the day, again, when your head hits that pillow. That's the one I chase. If, there's, if I chase anything, it's that feeling of, I kept it. I kept the promises and I did it. And damn, this feels good.